Hi, this is Craig Stocks. Today I'm going to walk through the process of doing a light painting from beginning to end. That means from the camera all the way to finishing it on the computer. I would say this is really a basic technique. Uh, it can be used by anybody. Uh, you can also use a little more intermediate techniques if you want to use a little bit of Photoshop, but you don't have to use Photoshop or really even Lightroom to get some fairly interesting results. So let me walk you through the process with the camera, how we're going to do the light painting, and then we'll open the images on the computer when we're done. For our subject, I chose a simple roll of toilet paper, partly because it's a subject of interest right now, but also because it's not shiny and reflective, uh, it'll be easy to light, and also it won't move, which is somewhat important because we will be using a long shutter speed. So you want something that won't be moving it's very difficult to get people, and certainly children or pets would not be very easy to photograph using this technique. I also have just a very simple LED flashlight. It's not real bright, but it's also not real dim either. It's just a, a basic LED flashlight. And the last piece of equipment over here besides the camera is a remote trigger, which you'll see when we start using this that it's best if you're not next to the camera because you don't want the light to come directly from the camera. You want the light to come from the side or somewhere more interesting. Camera settings are real basic. I'm using a Sony a7R2 mirrorless camera with a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens and I do have a wireless remote trigger attached. In terms of the camera settings, it's set on ISO 100, which is the base ISO, and about a half second exposure at F16. And the timer for the exposure is not that critical because you can always turn the flashlight on and off and control the, the exposure duration with the flashlight rather than with the shutter. So you could actually use a very long shutter speed or a very short shutter speed just depending on what's the most comfortable and convenient for you. So what I'll do is trigger the camera, and then while the shutter is open, I'll use the flashlight to paint light onto the subject, and I'll take several frames with light coming from different directions so I can experiment with different looks and choose what we like the best. So we'll turn the room lights off which it's not pure pitch dark, but it is pretty dark. And you may have noticed, in fact, that I have a white background, a white wall behind the, the subject. And that's okay because the exposure that we have in terms of the ISO at ISO 100 being a pretty low ISO and a fairly small aperture at F16, there's really not much exposure. So if I just take a basic exposure without any light, it's going to be almost completely black, even though there is a fair amount of light leaking into the room. So, I'll grab the flashlight and the remote trigger and turn the flashlight on and it'll be just as a, a beam and you can see it lighting up the roll of toilet paper. Now when I trigger the camera, so there was one picture, I'll move the light down here light it from the side, maybe light it more from behind, maybe from right above. And you, usually you want to include lighting from both sides. And just for comparison, I'll shoot one with the light where the camera is so that you can see what that looks like. Now the last thing I want to do is change the shutter speed on the camera to something quite a bit slower. So we'll change the shutter speed to something like two seconds. Actually changed it to 3.2 seconds. And the reason I did that, what I'm going to do is light now that I have the camera set at 3.2 seconds, I'm going to actually move around and light this two or three times with the in one exposure. So I'll light it once from one side, turn the flashlight off, move around to the second side, and light it again. And I'll probably just use my hand to cover the flashlight beam rather than actually turning the flashlight on and off. 
This is a three second exposure, so trigger the camera, move to the other side, and because it has an electronic first curtain, that's why we're not hearing the start of the exposure, we're just hearing the end of it. Let's do one more three second exposure. So the start and the finish. So that should give us some pictures to look at. Now let's go to the computer and see what they look like. Okay, so now we're back at the computer and I've simply inserted the memory card from the camera and imported those photos into Lightroom so we can look at them on the computer. And nice variety of lighting. I'll make the thumbnails a little bit larger here so you can see them. Uh, the camera was set on daylight white balance and because this is a white subject it looks pretty close to daylight. Uh, let's look at the first image and there's a little bit of a green cast to it. Uh, that's not terrible. Uh, if you don't want to do any post-processing you could use it just like this. Uh, you might need to experiment with your flashlight a little bit and determine if daylight or tungsten or some other white balance works better. Uh, but in this case, it's not bad the way it is. And let's look at some of the different lighting. So here, the light is coming from behind and to the right. So this was the first frame that I shot. The second one is also from behind and to the right, but I held the flashlight a little bit lower. So you see we've got just a little bit of light kind of raking across the top of the roll here, but most of it is on the side. Uh, this one's a little bit bright but that could be darkened in post-processing. This one, the light's even further behind. And I want you to notice something, that when the light is off to the side, we get a lot of nice detail and texture in the roll. And that's going to be true whether it's a roll of toilet paper or whatever the subject is. It's the highlights and shadows that create texture and shape and make a picture interesting. If you look at the one where I held the flashlight basically next to the camera, and we can even go into the develop module and I'll lower the exposure a little bit, it's just not as interesting. It's kind of bright in the center. Uh, you can see the texture, but it certainly doesn't show up nearly like it does when the light is off to the side. When the light rakes across and these little dimples and textures create uh, divots and little shadows, it creates a lot more texture. So that's why you want to use a self-timer or a remote trigger so that you can move around the subject and light it from the sides or from behind, uh, overhead, somewhere other than straight on. Now each of these were half second exposures and that worked pretty well. At the end, we also experimented with a longer exposure, and during the exposure, I walked around and lit the subject from both sides. So if we look at this one, this was actually a 3-second exposure, 3.2 seconds. And for this one, if you recall, I shined the flashlight on it at the start of the exposure from the left side, covered up the flashlight, moved around to the right side, and then let the, the roll from the right side. So that gave us light from both sides even though we only have one flashlight. And that creates a very interesting light pattern. Um, you know, you could invest in studio lights or, or off-camera flash or more exotic and more expensive ways to do this, but that's a very easy way just with a dark room, a flashlight, a tripod, um, and about a, however long it's going to take you to walk around. And even though there was a fair amount of light in the room, I didn't have any trouble seeing, the camera still saw the background as black. And remember, there was a, actually a white wall behind this. Uh, because there just wasn't much light in the room, the exposure still came out as black, which is really what we want when we're going to do this kind of light painting. Now, if you're interested in more intermediate-level processing that you can do in Photoshop, Let's take two of the images, and I'm going to just go back to the library module. And let's go to the grid view, which I got to just by tapping the G key. And let's choose one where the light is coming from the right side. 
and one where the light's coming from the left side. And I'll select both of those. <clears throat> and then I'll right click and choose Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. What that's going to do is open those two images with one stacked on top of the other in the layer stack. And then we can blend the two together so that we have two different images, but we can see the light from both of them. And there's a trick to doing this, and that trick is using the blending modes. Let me pull the layer palette up a little bit. Right here where it says Normal, that's where you choose a blending mode. And when you open the drop-down, you'll see there's lots of different ones. Basically, the first set starts with Darken, and those use generally the darker pixels on the upper layer to blend with what's below. So if you choose Darken, anything that's darker on the upper layer would show. Anything that's lighter than what's below it won't show. The next group is the one we want, and that starts with Lighten. And what this is going to do is any place the pixels on this layer are lighter than what's below it, it would show the lighter of the two. And if we look at the two layers, the one on top has the light from the right. The one on the bottom has the light from the left. So I'll turn the top one back on, and with the top layer selected, I'll change to Lighten Blending Mode. And like magic, now we see the whichever pixels are brighter from either the left or the right. So in effect, we now have the subject illuminated from both sides. If for some reason you don't want to use all of that light, that you can turn this on and off and see, well, maybe we don't like the way the light on the upper layer is affecting the top of the roll. The top of the roll might look a little bit more interesting with just the bottom layer. So we can add a layer mask, grab our brush tool by tapping the B key. I'll make the brush a little smaller. I'm going to tap D for the default colors, and then X to move black to the foreground color. And painting with 100% opacity and 100% flow, I'll paint on the mask, not the layer, but on the mask. And what that does is just mask that part of the layer. If I mask out more than I want, I can switch to white as my foreground color by tapping the X key, and then paint some white back in, and that will bring that back. So that gives us some, you know, perhaps a more interesting result. But what you really want to do is visualize when you look at the different frames, which ones might go together and make an interesting combination. And one thing to avoid is getting too much light because it's the, the light and shadows that make a light painting interesting. And there may be a temptation to pick a lot of different layers that have a lot of different lighting patterns that each one by itself might be interesting. But when you put them all together, you wind up with that over, over illuminated, uh, you know, just one bright image without the highlights and shadows and textures. So just something to be aware of. Uh, I would encourage you to set up your camera in a room that's as dark as you can get it. It doesn't have to be pitch dark. Set the camera on manual exposure, manual focus, or autofocus, and then switch the camera to manual focus so the lens stays focused. Settings I used are work pretty well, ISO 100, around F14, F16, something like that. Um, somewhere in a half second to one or two seconds for the shutter speed, and then either a self-timer or a remote trigger so that you can move around and illuminate the subject from different angles. Uh, you could also enlist the help of a friend to trigger the sh shutter on the camera while you move around and light it from different sides. That's really all you need to do to create the light painting. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can bring it into the computer in something like Lightroom, uh, Luminar, Photoshop, whatever you use, and do some additional post-processing to, to really polish it up. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, have a great day.